I'm Scott L. Miller, it's the 7th of April, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua, and today we're going to be talking about a fire that happened out at the beach, and we're going to be talking about how you can simply view relocation as long travel, and it's going to change your perspective on looking at relocating everywhere in the world forever. I'll see you after the bump. All right, it's Friday, it's the 7th, and today's big event. We didn't think we were going out to the beach today. We were trying to avoid it. We didn't want to have to deal with anything out there because Semana Santa, like I said, this whole week is Semana Santa, but last night, and sorry for the wind, really uh, picked up the activity, hence why I went out to the, uh, the events in Sutiava last night. If you didn't see that, watch yesterday's incredibly long episode. Sorry for how long it is, but I think lots of good material yesterday uh, doing um, uh, viewer questions. I love doing that. That's really cool, and it gives me a break from doing the outdoor shoots because I just need breaks. But uh, watch yesterday's to see what we did with the, the street food and the festival in Sutiava. Today is Friday, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are the mayhem days out at the beach. And we're like, no way are we going out there. Not going to do it. We don't even want to see it. Like, we know what a, what a mob looks like. No need to be there for it. And uh, we thought we were going to get away with it. And then in the middle of the day, we suddenly got called because Alan had gone out to the beach and he put on um, WhatsApp, which fits with the video we just made about WhatsApp. And we uh, started just sending me video of what was going on. So I couldn't see what was going on. I thought it was a butt dial. And uh, then I realized it was the fire department and the police department were there because our neighboring business was on fire. Now, if you're looking at a map, uh, it's a little bit hard to tell because the satellite is a little bit fuzzy and the labels on some things are off a little bit, but Playa Roca sits to the north of us. We have the Simple Beach Lodge and Pirates Point uh, complex. South of us is hard to define. On the roadside, there's just a house that during the busy season, with just a few weeks, gets turned into an ice cream shop. Uh, sometimes it's a fish store. I think it's just squatters in there. I don't think anyone actually owns the place. Uh, and then behind it, is a bunch of just shacks on the beach and kind of sandwiched in between as Buena Onda Surf, which we use sometimes. Uh, we just rent out some space and use the extra space as our second floor so that we can fit more tables in. I don't exactly know whether we were using it or not, what exactly was going on, but some, uh, apparently a couple of girls snuck up there uh, and, and ignored the no smoking signs, started smoking, threw a cigarette off and lit uh, Leon Surf, uh, which is next to us, on fire. And uh, they had the roof on fire. So the hotel responded. We had all of our fire extinguishers and people were out there with buckets. And they were able to get the fire out. Minimal roof damage, not a huge deal. Um, I think they estimated about $150 worth of damage. Um, apparently the girls were guests of, uh, or, or were attempting to be customers, claiming to be customers of ours, and then dined and dashed once they set someplace on fire. So they both set a business on fire and stole their food from us. Uh, so not not a great uh, not a great set of customers there, but that was a little bit of adventure. So Paul jumped in the car and ran out to the beach to see what was going on. And uh, Marcella was out there um, and, the, and all the management team. And it ended up not being a big thing and not actually involving us because they dined and dashed. So it wasn't even customers of ours, right? It was just people who were uh, screwing with all the businesses on the beach. And the, the good thing is it wasn't our property involved. So we were not involved in any way and our cameras were on them and got them on camera and some of our staff had seen them so it worked out pretty well i think the police were able to figure out who it was pretty easily and the damage was minor but uh yeah that was the adventure for the day and uh, it's just gonna be super busy tonight and then tomorrow will be even busier yet. So the one thing we do have to do today, Paul's doing for much of the day is running around getting more fire extinguishers because we can't go into Semana Santa's busiest two days having all of our fire extinguishers <laughs> exhausted from the adventure today. All right, so I want to talk about long travel as relocation. This is one of the most powerful concepts in how you think about relocating that I will ever be able to tell you. This changes everything for most people. 
when you're thinking about, and, and this doesn't just apply to your ability to relocate, it also gives you the thinking you need when discussing and, and contemplating working abroad, because it, it's a very powerful concept. The idea of relocating and the idea of traveling slowly actually overlap essentially 100%. At some point, the only difference between them is your intent to potentially move on someday. If you look at travel hundreds of years ago, think about Victorian England. When people would go between the United States and England, for example, people would sail over, it would take weeks, they would spend months at a time, sometimes years, and they wouldn't consider it moving to a new country, they would simply think of it as being on an extended vacation or trip. Because it took so long to get places, because it was such an an ordeal to do so, the, the trips became months or years long, uh, typically months, many months in many cases, people would go to Paris for a year. For example, when, uh, when students were, were getting done with university, they would, or before they started university, they would do the grand tour of Europe, and that could take months or years to do that. It was just expected that going to see things took a long time. Because you weren't going to see an attraction like Disney World, and you weren't spending money like you were in Disney World. You were going to a place, and the purpose was to visit the museums, get to know neighborhoods, maybe learn a language, get to really know an, a city, a, an area, people, make connections. Um, become culturally uh, uh, invested in a place. And so the idea wouldn't make sense to do it quickly. And relocating isn't that much different. From a legal perspective, tour, being a tourist and being relocating like a digital nomad completely overlap. There's no difference, right? When you start seeking residency, and especially if you start seeking citizenship, yes, that starts to change things. Then you have moved. In a, in a legal sense, in a, in a concrete sense. But unless you decide to do that, really the idea of relocating is simply one of traveling really slowly and taking the time to settle in the same way that people used to always do it. And once you start thinking of it that way, you start worrying about a lot of things less. You don't need to worry about buying or investing as soon as you arrive, or worse, before you arrive. Sure, you might still want to do those things, but you're thinking of it differently. Well, I'm showing up and I can always make decisions. But the most important thing, the biggest one, is fear. People talk about how worried they tend to be. A lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people worry when they think about relocating to a new location. And uh, on my channel, you know, Nicaragua is often a big leap for a lot of people. Uh, often it's the first place you've looked at moving abroad. If it's not, you're less likely to be on my channel, of course. And uh, people often need reassurances. They often need uh, hand-holding, and there's nothing wrong with that. But often it's because they're thinking of relocation as an irreversible permanent decision. But let me ask you, the fact that you're looking to relocate at all indicates that your first location was not a permanent decision. And yet, if you ask people, are you permanently located in wherever, United States, Canada, wherever you are, you say, well, yeah, that's my location. It's permanent. But could you move? Of course, yeah. I mean, I don't plan to, but I'm indefinitely here. Okay, great. Now that you're looking at moving, that relocation, you may think of it as permanent or indefinite. But the power to move again hasn't changed. You can just move on. And so the difference is when you do long travel, you tend to say, well, I'm going to go to Nicaragua, maybe for a month, maybe for three months, maybe for two years. But I then plan to move on to name your place, Paraguay. I'm going to go to Paraguay for a long period of time. The dogs have found a coconut. And if you're moving to some place and you're thinking of it as, relocate, as relocating, you're going to say, well, I'm moving to Nicaragua. Oh, and when do you plan on moving on? I have no plans to move on. This is fair. That is e essentially the difference. The important thing is at any moment, the person who's moving to Paraguay could say, you know what? I don't want to move to Paraguay. I love Nicaragua. I'm going to stay here another two years. And the person who was planning on staying in Nicaragua could say, you know what? It's been two years. I'd like to go to Paraguay and off they go. And the two, the only thing that's different is how much they're intending to stay in a place. Now I understand some of you, many of you, are going to look to potentially buy a house, maybe start a business, become invested in your community. And over time, as you become more invested, it's going to be harder to move. That's absolutely true, 100% in every possible way. And I am the same. I am a slow mover in general who has settled indefinitely in Nicaragua. 
For me, the key difference, and for many of you, the key difference will be, do you have a home base where you store your things? And that is what happens to me. This is where my children are being raised, my dogs live here, all of my possessions are based here, and if I go for a long time somewhere else, I don't plan to take them with me. Now, in the past, when I moved abroad and moved to many different countries, I did take everything with me. So in uh, the way we talk about it, that was relocation. Yes, we left a storage unit back in the United States, just as we do now, because there's some things that are impractical to move anywhere, and it's just we don't want to throw them away yet, and we're right in the barrier of doing that. So soon, hopefully, that will change. But uh, here, we've made the decision for us that Nicaragua is going to be our base, and so our things accumulate here, and our dogs live here, and our children call it home. And when we look to move on somewhere else, unlike in the past, when I moved other places, I don't plan, at least plan, on giving up my home in Nicaragua. I plan on keeping this as a home base, keeping my dogs here, returning here. I never planned to return to the United States, not as a place to live. I only ever plan to return to it as a place to deal with some logistics before moving on to the next place. So that's the difference for me. But for you, you need that's all you need to think about. Is Nicaragua a place where you're going to invest and call it home? You can always pick up and move again. Yes, it could be a hassle, but each time it gets easier and it's always an option for you. So mentally, I really recommend thinking of relocating for anyone, for anything, as being a form of travel. Really, life is a form of travel. And for some people, it's simply a, a journey where they never get going. And for others, it's a journey where you're constantly moving. And for many of us, it's a journey where you move sometimes and don't move sometimes. But picking a place to live once you're free of your original location, that freedom to move whenever you want is always there. And even if you never leverage it, knowing that that freedom is there, knowing that the power to move to countless countries, tons of cities, amazing amounts of different regions and areas, all lies within your grasp. And the only thing stopping you from moving to them is your decision not to. And I'm not saying you should make the decision to do it. I'm saying that you should realize that the power is in you. Anytime you want to go, you could go. Today, you could pack up and move to hundreds of different really beautiful, interesting locations. Maybe the best one is Nicaragua, but there's some that get really nice elsewhere too. Knowing that all of them are there anytime you want is a really freeing and overwhelming thing. Knowing that, ah, oh, all of the world is, is laying at your doorstep, and all you have to do is decide to go if you want, and you could be in those places. It's, it's liberating. And I suggest you take the time to internalize because it makes relocating completely not scary. I mean, maybe travel is scary. Maybe getting on an airplane for you is scary. Maybe crossing a national border is scary. Maybe setting up an apartment for, you know, you're going to Paris for the weekend and you find that nerve wracking. Maybe hotels are okay, but renting an apartment is scary. Those things aren't gonna change. Those things remain scary. But as far as the scariness of the travel, it is no scarier, should be, you should feel exactly the same whether you're going to uh, Rome for two weeks or coming to Nicaragua for the rest of your life. Because in both cases, when you go to Rome, you can decide to stay longer and just keep traveling. And you don't know that you won't decide that until you get there. And when you get to Nicaragua, sure, you plan to stay, but you don't know you won't move on to Rome in two weeks. That decision is there for you to take whenever you want to take it. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, check up here. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. A lot of you have. Thank you so much. It is so much. We have a surprise new bit of equipment. I have some equipment that I've announced and some that's going to be a surprise, hopefully coming in two weeks from now. Uh, I'm going to have new content for the channel. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want to I want to see if some of you can guess what we're using to do some new filming. And I hope that it actually arrives because uh, I've got to get it brought in from the States. And, uh, but it's, it's all of you who are buying a coffee for me that make it possible for us to get new batteries, new tripods, new cameras, new shots of things, new epic footage. And I hope uh, some of you have complained for legitimate reasons. I'm complaining inside my head too, that we really need to have more B-roll, more interesting footage and not just my talking head all the time. I want to make that happen right now. I'm super busy. So that's partially hurting that, but I want to get more equipment to make that a lot easier as well. So if you could support the channel, even in, even just a single coffee makes a really big difference. And uh, of course, share in social media, 
Facebook, especially Twitter, LinkedIn, Reddit, all those things. Tell your friends about the show. Send the link to people. Say, this is really interesting. I learned about three thinking relocation as travel. Let people know. This is something that people need to know. And uh, like and subscribe. Get down in the comments. Let me know about your fears about relocating, where, you know, how you feel in this whole spectrum of travel and relocating and, and why it feels permanent and what things are making you feel more permanent. Let's have a discussion about that. If you've got questions, get down there. I love doing shows where we answer questions and I will see all of you tomorrow.